Ag America TV here. This is Randy McKee here, and I'm with State Senator Larry Roden, who is working really hard to become U.S. Senator Larry Roden. Thanks a lot, Larry, for being with us today. Thank you. My pleasure. You know, we're here at Dakota Fest and seeing all the great new advances in technology around here. Isn't something how the system works? Yes. Yeah. Quite a quite a gathering. Just a you know a, a showing of uh, the strength of agriculture in the state of South Dakota. You know. Uh, Let's switch over to politics really quick because that's you know that's what we're uh, really thinking about right now. And there are a lot of people who are, call themselves conservatives in South Dakota who are really glad you got in this race. Yeah, well, I, 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 I I'm glad to hear you say that because I, I think that's uh, that's the case. There are a lot of people that wanted to see a, a conservative choice uh, in the South Dakota primary. You know. Uh, you have, uh, you know, like everybody who's running, I guess, uh, you have real deep roots in South Dakota. Tell us a little bit about your upbringing out there in Meade County. Well, sure. Well, you know, uh, I'm on my father's ranch. My father put the place together when he came back from World War II. My grandfather uh, homesteaded just a few miles away. My brother's on uh, my grandfather's original homestead that he uh, claimed up on when he, he came back from World War I. Uh, I have a son that uh, is currently flying helicopters in Fort Rucker, Alabama, Black Hawk helicopters, and I was in the National Guard. So I say that because two reasons. I, my roots run very deep in South Dakota soil, and we have a long history of service to our country and in my family. And, and I really felt a call to service in you know, the circumstances that our country's in and uh, uh, the choices we had for uh, our next U.S. Senator and I felt very compelled. Uh, I was approached over a year ago by a group of businessmen and and uh, friends uh, about considering running and so we've been, that's been a year-long decision our families went through in a process uh, to determine that yeah, we felt that we were called to service and uh, that we should take that step. You know I can't imagine even with somebody, I mean you've been around quite a long time, I mean there's a lot of people who know who you are and who like you and who admire what you've done but still, it's a lot. Putting a political organization is a lot like rolling a rock up a hill, isn't it? Oh yeah, you know, tough sledding. Uh, I know I've got a lot of work ahead of me. Uh, you know, my name recognition, even though I've been 13 years in the legislature, uh, you know, that still on a statewide basis, I'm still relatively unknown. So I, so I intend to get around the state. I've been on the road for about a week now in Sioux Falls and the. Uh, down in Turner County Fair and uh, uh, riverboat days in Yankton and hey, what a pleasure to have an excuse to get around the state of South Dakota and meet the, the people that, from all across the state, especially in the world of agriculture. I mean we have a lot of great people but uh, none better than the, the ag interest in the state. Well you know and that I think that's a lot where our uh, foundational beliefs come from. You know we were just talking about all the grass out in your country seem to come alive again after you know getting some rain but you know that's why I guess a lot of people are saying it's so important to stick to principles because if you don't get rain you just don't completely change the way you manage your ranch overnight that you know the rain's gonna come absolutely you know I've, I've always maintained that in, in uh, you know our principles in South Dakota we stand by the decisions that we make and we're personally responsible we take responsibility for the actions of uh, the results of our decisions and you know that we still adhere to the core conservative values that made our country great and so for that reason I, all, all the more reason that we need a, a strong leader from South Dakota to represent us in the US Senate somebody that has that kind of backbone and the, and the convictions and the courage to stand by those convictions when uh you get there, assuming you make it. What are what are the three most important things that you're going to focus on? Well, I think you know. I think uh, uh, obviously our our uh, our national debt, 17 trillion dollars, and just growing exponentially, and no attempt or even uh, 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 attempt to stem that tide in Congress. They they haven't they haven't presented a budget uh, for years. That's inexcusable. So we have a national debt that's out of control, uh, number one. Uh, number two, I think Obamacare is a game changer for the United States. I'll do everything in my power, uh, and I've stated this before, to work to repeal Obamacare, defund it. Uh, Senator uh, Ted Cruz has presented a bill, I, I believe uh, John Thune has signed on to it, to defund 
Obamacare. I have pledged support for that type of legislation. Uh, I think that's a game changer, and it's just too important not to stand strong on that issue and ever do everything in our power to stop that. You know, I uh, read kind of an exchange in the paper last week about you uh, pledging to not raise taxes, and I, I think you had a pretty good point there. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, we don't have a, uh, we don't have a revenue problem at the federal level. We have a spending problem. And, and I felt compelled to sign that pledge because I don't want to negotiate. We've, we've got the uh, misperception that compromise is how much ground we're willing to give up. That's not what a compromise is about. A compromise means you don't get everything you want, but you get part of what you want. Uh, by negotiating tax increases, we are losing ground because uh, w we can look in our past anytime we've increased taxes with the promise that we would address spending the, the back end of the equation never takes place. Uh, I think I think the sequestration is an example of that. Raise taxes on 80 percent of the people and it actually increased our deficit spending. That is absolutely unacceptable. Well then uh, there's a lot of people who are with you on that so hopefully they'll you know get their one of the things that I think a lot of South Dakota people are thinking about right now is we're taking a look out there at Ellsworth. We see another round of BRAC coming. We see a, a big, big effort uh, in Congress and around the country to trim that military spending down. Do you think uh, this time we might see a little more serious look at, at Ellsworth shutting down through BRAC? Well, you know, I've not been uh, part of any conversations, and I, so I don't know details of uh, where we stand. But I do know that uh, I've worked in the legislature uh, hard, worked hard with uh, some colleagues to, uh, to present change, the Ellsworth Authority. So we've taken steps to brace for the next round uh, to, uh, to, to uh, put the buffer zone, the appropriate buffer zones around the primary crash zones. So I think that we've, we've put ourselves in a better position than we were in a few years ago when the initial round took place. All right, well, a um, couple more questions for you. Okay. A big one. What, uh, what, what makes you a better choice in, in not only in the primary, but if you get through that in the general? What makes you the better choice than anybody else that you know of that's running right now? Well, you know, I believe that our, our next senator should somebody, be somebody that has a, a strong moral compass and strong uh, principled uh, leadership abilities. Uh, I, won't, I won't criticize the other people in this race, but I will say that I believe that I possess that strength of character the moral compass, the vision for what it's going to take to put our country back on track. And that's going to also have to be somebody that's willing to stand against the establishment regardless of which side of the aisle the establishment's on. And I think I have that strength, the character to go to D.C. and do exactly that. Well, that makes total sense to you. Finally, um, I know there are people out there who are going to be watching this video and say, you know, I really like that guy. And having known you for a long time and having been one of your constituents, um, I'm, I'm, I'm in that crowd that likes Larry Roden. How uh, can they get a hold of you if they want to throw in and, and put a shoulder behind the boulder and help you roll her up the hill? Well, I appreciate that. Uh, my, well, first of all, my home email address is lroden at gwtc.net. More simply, my website for, for my, my campaign website is www.larryroden.com. LarryRoden.com. All right. Well, folks, uh, that's a good place to find out what's going on with Senator Roden. And uh, thank you very much for the time you've given us today. And, and good luck on this long, hard journey. But uh, I hope you'll come out the other end knowing it's been worth it for you. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it.